Hi, this is James Plafke and Sal Cangeloso. We're going to be doing Hi. PC Mag Live today. Uh, we're going to round up the big news of the weekend. Uh, we're going to answer user questions, and we're going to look at the one cool thing in the PC Mag Labs. Sal, big news. Mobile World Congress happened this weekend in Barcelona, Spain. Tell <laughs> us about it. Yeah, so Mobile World Congress is kind of the big mobile show of the year, kind of like CES, but it's in Europe, and it's uh, really focused on uh, tablets, smartphones, that sort of thing. The, uh, the big announcement was today, and it was the Samsung Galaxy S5. Uh, this is a replacement for the Galaxy S4. It's probably going to be the biggest Android phone of the year and one of the biggest phone sellers of the year. It is, I took some notes, a uh, 5.1 inch uh, phone, 1920 by 1080 display. It's a uh, 432 PPI. It's got a super AMOLED LED screen, uh, AMO LED screen, uh, new Snapdragon processor, uh, 802.11 AC, and some other stuff we'd expect. And then it's got some really cool features, James. Such as what, Sal? Yeah. It's got a uh, fingerprint scanner, which is kind of cool, uh, a la iPhone 5S, uh, heartbeat sensor. Is the fingerprint scanner a button or is it the whole screen? There were rumors that it was the whole screen. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a little button at the bottom of the screen. So you press okay. uh, kind of above your home button. Okay. And then it also it's uh, splash proof. So uh, kind of like the S5 Active, it could, you could like get some water on it, but you can't like, it's not ruggedized, so you can't really beat up on it. So don't use it in the shower, but if it's in the rain, you can answer a text, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that'll be a really big phone this year. It's a big release for Samsung. They had some smart watches and stuff like that too, but uh, this is really kind of what we're looking for. And then uh, also Nokia had a phone. Uh, it's the Nokia X. This is the uh, Android phone that they were talking about that you were so excited about, James. I was so excited because Nokia is doing a non-Windows phone, which is kind of strange. Why is that strange? Uh, <laughs> Nokia's owned by Microsoft, <laughs> so it's kind of a big deal. The, uh, so this is the Nokia X. It's Android powered. Uh, but it doesn't use GMS, which means it doesn't have Google's kind of special sauce to it. So no Play Store, no uh, Google Maps API, but it will use, uh, Nokia is going to offer uh, Nokia Maps and things like that. And then as far as the uh, other specs go, it's a uh, dual SIM, it's four inch screen, it uh, runs at 800 by 480, uh, three megapixel camera, one gigahertz Qualcomm SOC. Ba basically, it's a pretty nice mid-range phone. Could it be more excited for a pretty nice mid-range phone? Uh, <laughs> and uh, while, uh, what, Samsung will be releasing a huge phone soon, Sony just had an enormous release over the weekend. They released the PlayStation 4 in its home country of Japan. Mm. Now, the reason why this is important, aside from thirsty Japanese gamers getting hands on their favorite, perhaps, company's <laughs> console, uh, I think it's Nintendo's not really yeah. doing too well, yeah. Um, uh, the big news would probably be because Microsoft does not have a presence in Japan, which means the Xbox One does not have a presence no, in Japan. No presence to speak of. No I mean, presence know. to speak of, yeah. Um, I'm sure someone has an Xbox One in Japan. A couple imports, yeah. A couple, a couple guys. Uh, and with the PS4 already outselling the Xbox One in North America? By a wide margin. By a over wide a margin. Units. Not exactly double, but over a million units, mm -hmm. which is possibly just limited by uh, supply constraint. Um, this will probably jump the PS4 to at least double over the Xbox One. We don't have numbers yet, but as far as reports go, it only took about two days to completely sell out in the country, and Sony is already restocking consoles. Yeah, that's huge. Also, there's some Microsoft One news. Uh, so apparently the console dropped in price in the UK. It was uh, 439 pounds, and now it is 399 pounds. But also it's going to include Titanfall, which it's is kind of the biggest game out right now for the uh, uh, for, 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 the for both consoles. Yeah, Titanfall is basically the only big flash, uh, flagship exclusive. And they're not dropping the Kinect out of the bundle. So basically they're dropping 30, 50 bucks. I'm not sure if uh, uh, the conversion off the top of my head. 30 pounds. So those right. are like Europe dollars. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be like, I think it's about 60 bucks. Yeah. Um, so Kinect's still there. And you're getting a game. Basically you're getting a free game. And that seems to be Microsoft's uh, shot fired at Sony's release. However, there's no news if that's coming to North America, but it's probably a safe bet once the Japanese sales numbers okay, release. Okay, okay, okay. The boring stuff's out of the way. Let's talk about wrestling. Okay, so last night was WWE's Elimination Chamber, Whoa. which was unfortunately kind of disappointing depending on who you're a fan of. However, the weird thing was that it was the big and, prob uh, and the actual last pay-per-view before the WWE Network launches this morning, which is at 9 a.m., I believe, and it's kind of getting pounded, so we don't exactly know how the sign-up works just yet because we can't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the news here is not exactly that WWE is trying to subvert cable because they're still stuck with airing their shows Raw live 
and SmackDown so. on TV, and they air after on the WWE Network that they air on the, the channel. So the thing here is that pay-per-views are now only 10 bucks instead okay. of what we pay last night, like 60 for Elimination Chamber, I believe. I was not we. I was not <laughs> with you. Sal, Sal wasn't watching with wrestling. me. <laughs> I was watching wrestling with a bunch of dudes. What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but now it's, it's $9.99 per month, but there is a $60 basically... Possibly upfront. Again, we don't know, but it's a six month for the commitment. network, right? Yeah, yeah, for the network. So you pay for the so network, but you save yeah. some on the pay per view special events or whatever. Yeah, um, and as far as wrestling goes, if you're into wrestling, this seems like a really good deal despite the current direction of WWE storylines, which aren't great let's if you let's didn't not, watch last let's night. Let's not get into it. <laughs> let's not get into it. Um, <laughs> I am enraged. But um, I'm it supposed has, to yeah. chest slap you now to <laughs> end the segment. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, uh, stop filming at the chest slap, of course. No. Um, <laughs> okay, so we yeah. have uh, one so question. We have okay, we have a question today. The question comes from Marvin, and this is great because Sal is our lighting expert. Mm -hmm. Marvin bought a new LED bulb, and it's blue. It's and blue. That sucks. Okay, so Marvin bought a bluish LED bulb. Right. It's a really common problem uh, with LED bulbs. So you have something called the color temperature or the CCT. <laughs> and uh, so basically, th it'll be a number <laughs> on the bulb somewhere usually between 2700 and 6500, and that's going to be your color temperature. And so like uh, a smaller color temperature, you know, say 2700 will be a warmer bulb. It'll be more orange hue, whereas if you get into the higher range, the 5000s or 4000s, it'll be a bluer or whiter than bluer bulb. So if you bought a bulb and it's kind of bluish, you might have accidentally bought a daylight bulb which is 4,000K or 5,000K or even 6,500K. So Sal, let's say I have a tall bathroom ceiling and the light breaks and I finally got around to changing the light bulb. How do I go to the store and buy a bulb of good color quality <laughs> instead of one that ends up blue after borrowing a huge ladder? I don't yeah. want to make the mistake. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically what you want to do is go to Home Depot or wherever your local store is or Amazon.com mm -hmm. and, and find a, you know, a reasonably you know, a reasonable provider of Phillips or Cree mm. or something like that. And then find your color temperature in there. It'll be, probably should be 2700K. That's usually what most people use in okay. America and Europe. Listed on the box. It'll be on the box, Listed it'll be in the, the specs. Box. And that's standard daylight, kind of a nice orange type view. If you want something whiter, then, uh, you know, you could, uh, or, you know, a lighter color, less orange, you could move up in the color temperature range just like Marvin did. Easy peasy, on accident. Easy. On yeah. accident. Um, and that was perhaps one of the coolest things we've ever heard, but we do have one cool thing to look at today Wait, in the lab. cooler? Cooler. Involved. Oh, color temperatures. <laughs> He's on today. Yeah. Uh, we do have one cool thing, which Sal is going to So, yeah, discuss. this is the Origin PC Eon 17 SLX. It's a gaming laptop, I'm told. It's a monster gaming laptop. This thing is, what do we say, James? 9.3 pounds. With another three pounds. pounds for that huge power brick that you were barely a able to move around. Gigantic power brick. And uh, so this is the new editor's choice gaming PC. This thing is uh, it's powered by Intel Extreme Core i7 4930 MX. Wow, the MX. The MX. Why processor. are we wowing at the yeah. MX? Uh, I'm not really sure. It's a 4930. <laughs> it's a top of the line processor. It's got two NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780M graphics cards. So this thing is a tank. It's Which like not quite a Titan. Uh, it's not a Titan, but you know, it was able to put this all into a mobile form factor. Although we use mobile in the loosest of terms, <laughs> this thing has one hour and 13 minutes of battery life. So 13 it, pounds and one hour and 13 minutes yeah. of battery life. Yeah, yeah but, but you're not going to move around too much, right? Yeah. This is like desktop class gaming in a semi-mobile form factor. Easy it's, for uh, LAN parties. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, exactly. It's for LAN parties. It's for people that kind of got to change your room, you want to game in the basement or... <laughs> game upstairs or something, um, whatever. I game in the daylight where people are. <laughs> yeah, uh, so what else we gotta say? Oh, it's got two 128 gigabyte SSDs in RAID 0 with a 750 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive in there. So, uh, you know, they, they used all that space uh, pretty, you know, pretty efficiently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big laptop, but they crammed a lot of crap in there. No, as someone who, um, I built a game computer and I used a 128 gigabyte SSD and that was it and that was a huge problem. <laughs> so it's good that this thing's stuffed full of storage. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get the price? The price is about, what, 3600 I think? I think that's what they said, 3600 3600 and change. So uh, a lot of PC for the money, but also a lot of money for the PC. Also, uh, 
a lot of PC considering it's gigantic. And um, that's the show today, everybody. Uh, check uh, PCMag.com slash MWC for some Mobile World Congress coverage, which will be going on, I assume, throughout the week. Yep. All week. That's it. <laughs>